Good morning and welcome to the study of the Word of God with Spring Valley Bible Church. I'm Phil McMillan and uh, uh, the first thing that we need to do this morning is prepare ourselves for worship and prayer. Nothing we can say or do is worthy to God. It's all His work done in His way. So uh, we seek His power, search your souls, lay aside your guilt, self-obsessions, problems, and ask God the Father for the eyes and ears of God the Holy Spirit so that all we say and do this morning may edify this local body and glorify our Savior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning you've given us in freedom that we can assemble together and look to your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the blessing of, of uh, hearing your word and, and in the power of your spirit and knowing the many blessings that you've given us through the person and work of Jesus. And we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for our salvation and this blessed season where we see your wisdom come into play into history and this great moment of the Advent and all that follows it. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your wisdom and grace. We thank you for this time together and we pray you will use it to edify our local body and glorify our Savior. In his name we pray, sir. Amen. Let's see. Uh, let's start with the song, shall we? All right. Would you all turn in the hymnal to 79? Would you join us to sing number 79, which is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus? Boy, that was a good choice for the song for the class today. Seven fourteen. Uh, Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. This is a uh, uh, going to, uh, uh, as always, a uh, quiz to follow. We're going to be talking about uh, this this passage and more as we go through our class today. Uh, let's see announcements. Uh, um, we are going to have class next week, normally, both classes, and uh, the following weekend will be Christmas, that's right, two weeks away, in case you haven't got your tree up yet. Uh, let's see, we have a, a, a lot of preparation and things to do. We're going to stay home and enjoy our families and, and uh, 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 on Christmas Day, which is on a Sunday this year. Uh, we will still be having our, our, our New Year's classes, though. Okay, we, we, we'll talk a little more about that uh, uh, maybe next week. But uh, uh, the following week, uh, you know, we'll 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 uh, bow to family traditions on on Christmas Day this year. But 
um, uh, you still got to come to church before you go out drinking for New Year's on New Year's <laughs> Eve okay? or New Year's Eve. Uh, let's see. So, uh, uh, that's not right. Huh? Yeah. New Year's, New Year's Day is after you. Yeah, New Year's Eve on New Year's <laughs> Eve. Everybody goes out on New Year's Eve, which is Sunday, right? No. 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 Sunday is New Year's Day. Okay. So you have to bring your hungover self to church Sunday morning. That's the idea. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, prayers. Any prayer requests? How's your wrist doing? Um, it's healing. I go get the stitches out tomorrow and... Uh, but my right arm's been really bothering me for about a week, so I'm going to have him check that out too. But yeah, everything's good. It's healing like it's supposed to. Okay. So thank you. Yeah, it's, it's getting stronger every day, so I, each day I can do something more. Okay. But um, I do have a few prayer requests. So uh, mm -hmm. my sister-in-law's been here visiting. Her sister, Denise, had a surgery um, she, on Wednesday. And they had to redo like her whole intestines and everything. And oh my goodness! It was pretty major. So that my my sister in law Debbie's here to take care of her sister. Um, she should be getting out of the hospital today, but she's going to have a lot of recovering to do. So name is Denise. Denise. Yeah, her name okay. is Denise. And then um, my um, cousin's husband Kenny died in a car crash Saturday night. Oh, yeah, I, I I haven't seen him in quite a few years in Colorado. He rolled his truck. Mm. So, uh, but is it, so it's Rhonda Thompson and family. Pray for them, yeah, because Kenny's already gone. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry for your loss. That's yeah, that's, um, everybody was pretty surprised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. And, uh, um, uh, Tish is, uh, uh, Good days, bad days, had a bad day the other day, and uh, always needs to be on your prayer list, please. And Bobby's still strengthening in his back, and as he does uh, um, physical therapy after that, uh, how, how long has it been? It's been less than a year, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, it yeah. was in the March. Wow, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. His back was severely broken, so severe spinal cord injury. And he's walking now, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's not and, even really using his cane oh, man. very much. I mean, he takes it, but he forgets it most of the time. He's like, I'm like, look at you. <laughs> that cane in case you fall. <laughs> he was even here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he helped with, helped the, with the decorations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Give Terry a bad time. <laughs> came, to, came to give Terry a bad time while she decorated. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am? Uh, two prayers, requests. Uh, first off, praise report uh, on the uh, on Uncle Willard. He's recovered well. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, now Brian's cousin Stan Rutherford. He had COVID two weeks ago, if I remember correctly, and he had prolonging health problem already. So his kidney failed uh, somewhat, and they had to put him on dialysis. Now, because they live so far away from the city, they put in the port and it has trained his wife on Friday to do the dialysis at home. So please pray for his wife, Sandra, to be able to administer that. They are very strong believer, but they mm -hmm. have been asking for prayers and anything that we can provide in, in terms of prayer. She's a she's a retired nurse, I think, isn't she? Yeah. But she is. This is new to her to perform right. dialysis. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But Sandra, did you say? Right. Yeah, Sandra. It's O N D R A. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, last week we went to the funeral. This is the second prayer request uh, to, for uh, Brian's brother's uh, father-in-law. Uh, he left behind his wife, who started having a sign of dementia, but they weren't able to get her to go see the doctor. So please be in prayer for her. Her name is Judy. And last name, O'Borny. O'Borny? O'Borny. O'Borny. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, uh, and how is Scott doing? He's still battling. Uh, he's, uh, he's getting a, a very new treatment for melanoma. Oh. And uh, he's 
I, I, I believe he's progressing as well as expected. So I'm very thankful that he's able to, he has the energy to do what he needs to do. Yes. Okay. Um, he remains on our prayer list, I believe, still. So. Okay. I know he's on ours. Right. <laughs> yeah. Any others? Yes, sir. I do have a phrase report. Uh, I do have a new job lined up uh, that will, after my current employment ends on January 6th, I'll mm -hmm. probably start that new job at the end of January, take a few weeks off. So thanks for all the prayers. Awesome. All right. That's fantastic. Hallelujah. Good to hear. Always great to hear. Answer your prayers. Yeah. All right. Any others? Anything come in on the web? <laughs> uh, nothing yeah. from the web right now. Okay. But they have all been informed about Herman. Yes. Uh, Herman is, uh, uh, you know, day to day, uh, uh, hanging in there. Uh, uh, more more bad days than good ones last week, from what I heard. We're going to see him uh, later this afternoon. Pat and I are going to go uh, visit with him and Judith. And, uh, but uh, definitely needs to be on your constant prayer list. Uh, uh, more than once a day would be good. <laughs> uh, and I'll let you know less next week if I have any updates after seeing you. Yeah. Right? Okay, let's take these prayer requests before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for praise reports and for uh, um, finding a, a way through illness and, and uh financial problems and and all that you uh, all that the devil's world can throw at us we know heavenly father where to go with those problems and we thank you for your grace we pray for uh denise and uh for uh, uh rhonda thompson and her family and their lost and lost and we pray for uh sam rutherford and his wife uh, uh sandra uh we pray for judy and we just pray uh that you would uh continue watching over all of these believers and uh if they uh, are not believers we pray you would answer our prayers for them that they may taste your grace and want some more and and the ultimate grace is found in your son heavenly father uh guide us as we uh, uh deal with all these prayer requests that uh your son might be glorified in all results and we ask these things in christ's name sir amen and john Hmm? And John. And John. We, yeah, we forgot John. So we have a friend oh. that we knew for <laughs> 30 some years. And Phil gave him the gospel and dinner Friday night. <laughs> Waited a long time to get that in. <laughs> 30 years in. So we're praying for John this week. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Uh, you want to, you want to, shall we, uh, uh, rather than pass it, we'll just put it in the back. Anyone who has a gift this month, uh, or this week that's live, you can, uh, toss it in the, in the plate as you go out. And, uh, uh online, of course, donations, uh, are accepted through PayPal. If you go to our website at springvalleybiblechurch.org or dot com, uh, click on contributions. There's a, a button for donate. Uh, we can, Donate to uh, through PayPal securely. You don't have to have a PayPal account. And uh, you can designate who you would like the uh, uh, proceeds to go to. Or if you don't put anything, it's going to go for our general fund, which is, is needed there. And we also are taking donations for the Reesley Family Ministry uh, for currently for our uh, uh, one missionary at a time support uh, effort. And uh, the Liberty Youth Ministry has a donate uh, link there as well. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, before our lesson this morning, would you join us in singing number 91? Hymn 91, the carol called The First Noel, the Angels Did Say.
let's see. Great. So uh, 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 let's have a word of prayer before we begin our Bible study this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace, for your blessings, for the uh, uh, opportunity to worship you in prayer, in song, in giving, and in the study of your word, and in fellowship with each other, Heavenly Father. Your blessings abound to us this morning, and we pray that all we see uh, here will be glorifying to your Son, for it's in his name that we pray, sir. Amen. All right. Let's start with this, my verse to you. And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the mystery of God. For I had determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. So we began last week uh, uh, a look at, at Christmas for our Christmas special. Uh, like so many concepts of Christianity, including marriage, family, studying the word of God and spirit and truth, Christmas has been lost. It's been buried under a mountain of commercialism and feel-good stories that do not mention Jesus or even God. So today, we're continuing a three-part series to help you find Christmas. Uh, last week, we saw some of the origins of customs and practices of Christmas and studied Advent, which is the doctrine that God became man. Advent is used to mark prophecies that God himself is also, the word is also used to mark the prophecies that God himself would become man to redeem us. And these come all through the Old Testament. And, and so the first thing we're going to do this morning is look at those, some of those prophecies that we see in the Old Testament and how they were, were fulfilled in the New Testament, New Testament. Because we know that Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God. And uh, in God's wisdom from eternity past, in his knowledge, he knew that man would fall and he knew that man would be unable to redeem himself. So in his, in his action on that uh, knowledge, he provided us with Jesus Christ, his son, come to become man, qualified as man to uh, live in sinless perfection and die on our behalf so that we could have salvation through his work and not of ourselves. It was his plan all along, and that's why we see it in Old Testament prophecy. We're going to uh, uh, look at it by topic and see the Old and the New uh, Testament pro proclamation about that. Uh, the uh, first thing is uh, from the very beginning, Genesis 3, we see that he was to be born of the seed of a woman. That is, he was going to, that God was going to become man. And it's, it's right up front in Genesis that we see that prophecy. Genesis 3 15, uh, we're told, and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. This is a picture of, of, of Jesus, uh, coming, becoming man, God becoming man in the person of Christ, and uh, uh, in true humanity, born just like all of us were, and living a life just like all of us live, the full human experience, because he was fully human and fully God in the hypostatic union. Here we have the prophecy of it in Genesis 3.15, and we hear the fulfillment of that in Galatians 4.4, 4, which says, But when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, and born under the law. He fulfilled all of the Old Testament rules and regulations of being righteous, and something that no one had ever done before because the law is there to prove our unrighteousness, that we can't be pleasing to God. But Christ was able to because he was sinless perfection, and he was 100% human in, in his person as he did that. So, uh, uh, God knew that he would have to be 100% man to represent mankind, humankind, as uh, uh, the sacrifice for sins. So, uh, noted and fulfilled there. Uh, uh, secondly, we saw that, uh, we see in the Old Testament, the prediction, the prophecy that Jesus would be born of the seed of Abraham. Uh, Genesis 12, 2 through 3, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, 
and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you, Abraham, he's talking to God, talking to Abraham, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. We see this uh, uh, fully answered in Matthew chapter 1, uh, verse 1, where we have the record of the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah, the son of David and the son of Abraham. And uh, his full genealogy all the way back to Adam is, is there. And a lot of the passage that we're going to, passages that we're going to see today uh, that mark fulfillment of these Old Testament things, they deal with Advent. They deal with the fact that God has become man. And as such, there, most of them are in the, in the Gospel of Matthew because the Gospel of Matthew is a presentation of the humanity of Christ. Right, uh, John tends towards this deity, and uh, 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 one bit tends toward his, his Jewishness. Right, and all the aspects of Christ are found in the four Gospels. Matthew, being the one that, that talks about his humanity, is the one that that is cited here the most today. Okay, so born of the seed of Abraham, uh, and we see that in the geology. Uh, next is that he would be born of the seed of Isaac. And uh, again, uh, uh, Genesis 17, uh, 19, Genesis 17, 19. But God said uh, to uh, uh, him, no, but Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son. And you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. We have a, uh, you, you might have had some confusion there as I talked about Abraham. Between the Abrahamic covenant, God's deal, God's deal with Abraham. But uh, uh, it's also the, the uh, establishment of the line of the Messiah, right? So when he says, uh, all the world will be blessed through you to Israel or to uh, Isaac, still talking to Abraham there when he talks about Isaac, he's still talking about Jesus is going to, the Messiah is from these lines of, of Abraham and Isaac are, is going to pay for our sins and redeem us in the, in the future. And so that's why we see references to it in the New Testament. Matthew 1, 2, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. So, all through the, the genealogy, we see the establishment of this family line so that Jesus would, Jesus' prediction, or the predictions of the Messiah in Jesus would come true. Uh, uh, and, and we would know that he is Messiah. We should be able to recognize he is Messiah and the one sent to redeem us from the uh, evidence, the propensity of evidence, as we see today from the Old Testament. God kept predicting that it was going to be through this Messiah, through this line, through these people that Jesus would come. Uh, so we saw Abraham, we saw Isaac, and in that same verse we just looked at, Jacob. Um, in Numbers 24, 17, water will fl flow from his buckets, and his seed will be by many waters, and his king shall be higher than a god, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Referring to um, uh, the Messiah, referring to talking to Jacob about his descendants, with God talking to Jacob about his descendants. He talks about how he's going to be a, the mighty king and, uh, uh, and uh, how he will be exalted and how he is the source of living water, right? And, and so it's a, another messianic reference to the Messiah coming through the, the, through the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And again, Matthew 1, 2, Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Okay, um, uh, next week, we had the uh, uh, prophecy that Jesus the Messiah would be descended from the tribe of Judah, specifically. Genesis 49, 10. Um, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor shall the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of all the peoples. 
remember that our, our Savior and Messiah is going to have a millennial kingdom in which all nations will answer to him. He's going to be the ultimate rule and the ultimate kingdom on earth. And that's the ultimate fulfillment of, of, of the Abrahamic covenant and the Davidic covenant and all covenants God makes, makes good his word in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Um, so we see this uh, 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 fulfillment of, of Christ being a descendant from the tribe of Judah uh, in Luke 3.33. Uh, the son of Aminadab, the son of Admon, the son of Ram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, and the son of Judah. That's part of the lineage of Christ, right? So uh, important that Christ was from the, the tribe of Judah because Judah was the, the, the tribe the kings came from, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, the next topic of prophecy that we see fulfilled in the New Testament is that the uh, Messiah would be heir to the throne of David. Isaiah 9, 7. Isaiah 9, 7 tells us, there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Uh, this again, millennial kingdom. And uh, 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 we see this mentioned in fulfillment in Luke chapter 1, verses 32 through 23, uh, 33, 32 and 33. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him, give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. Uh, uh, the ultimate uh, uh, aim of, of uh, Christ or fulfillment of Christ in the millennial kingdom we see again. Uh, and finally, uh, it, was, it was prophesied that uh, Christ would be born of a virgin. And we see, see that in our scripture reading of the day, Isaiah seven fourteen. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with you with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. God is with us, right? Uh, uh, Luke 1, 26 through 27. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David and the virgin's name was Mary. Luke 1, 30 through 33, uh, uh, one, Luke 1, 30, 1, 30 through 31. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. And uh, now the, and Matthew 1, 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Um, the next topic of prophecy, um, as if you needed more, you know, that born of a virgin thing, you know, you, when you get a full clear statement in Isaiah, he's going to be born of a virgin. And then somebody says, hey, a virgin's going to give birth over here. You would think everybody would pay attention to that, you know. But men, you know, mankind is is kind of dense, so God had to give us many paths through the, uh, a prophecy to come to the conclusion that that Jesus was the Messiah sent to redeem us all. Uh, the next topic was that he would be born in Bethlehem. We see this in Micah chapter five, verse two. But as for you, Bethlehem. Uh, too little to be among the clans of Judah. From you, one will go forth to me to be a ruler in Israel. His going forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. That uh, uh, announced the exact place where Jesus would be born. And, and it's not a major hub, right? It's a little town in, in, uh, uh, uh not a big part of, of Judah. From these humble beginnings, he will uh, 
Um, it was marked from eternity past that he would come right then at that spot. And in Luke 2, 4 through 7, Behold, Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and, and was with child. While they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, uh, not only that, that he was coming, where, where he was coming from, the exact place is also mentioned in the Old Testament that he would be born in Bethlehem. Um, the events off, uh, around Jesus and his early life, around his birth and early life, are also prophesied about in the Old Testament. In Jeremiah, we have the prophecy that uh, uh, all the, the children that were going to be slain by Herod because he was he had heard from the wise men that the king had come and he didn't want to lose his job. So he decided he would stop that king by killing all of the children. In Jeremiah 31, 15, uh, thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. How does that tie into the New Testament? Well, it quotes it. Uh, New Testament fulfillment. Uh, we see this in Matthew chapter 2, verses 16 through 18. Then when Herod saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, he became very enraged and he sent and slew all the male children who were in Bethlehem and all its vicinity from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the Magi. Then what had been spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she refused to be comforted because they were no more. So we know that that's, that passage in Jeremiah is a, 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 prof, a prophetic uh, mention of, of the slaughter of children by Herod because the New Testament tells us. See, they said it there, <laughs> right? Uh, let's see. Um yeah, and uh, it's funny, we, we don't have in this list of uh, the Magi themselves because uh, 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 they aren't in the, you know, there aren't like uh, talked about specifically in the Old Testament that they would be coming as, as a sign of the Messiah or anything. But the Magi came from, from ba Babylon, Chaldeans, and they had been taught by the Israelites in captivity all of these things that, that we see here of what's going to happen and when it's going to happen and when the, the king of the world is going to show up. And because they saw all the signs that, that, that they had learned about and the star in the sky, a little miracle to help them out there, they followed along immediately because they wanted to see that newborn king. So, uh, uh, another, uh, you know, the, another sign of prophecy, uh, if not direct prophecy, is seen in the in the wise men that came to to see the baby Jesus. Uh, uh, to avoid the slaughter of the children, uh, there was a, a a flight to Egypt by Joseph and, and Mary and the child. And uh, Hosea eleven one predicted this: when Israel was a youth, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. So why did, why can we, how can we say that the, the Messiah, the son came out of Egypt? Well, in Matthew 2, 14 and 15, we're told that, uh, so Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for Egypt. He remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet out of Egypt, I call my son, okay? We saw uh, last week that uh, when we were trying to find a, a 
pin down an exact date of the birth of Christ that Herod died in 4 BC. So, uh, and we, and we came to, came up to, uh, 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 approximately 6 BC that Jesus was born. So when Jesus came out of Egypt, he's going to be about two years old. Okay. Let's see. Mm. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, the, the much prophesied topic that Christ would be uh, preceded by a forerunner. And uh, uh, this it's always just so cool to me. When uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, I plan a class and look for verses, and, and it doesn't matter who else is teaching, whether it's Kit or Chris, and we do two classes, there's almost always going to be some some verse or concept overlap, you know, and and I always feel it's uh, uh, God the Holy Spirit, you know, telling us we're all on the same page here when whenever that happens. So when uh, Kit mentioned Isaiah forty three through five this morning, it's one of our our prophecies that Christ would be preceded by a forerunner, that being John the Baptist, right? Uh, John, who was called a voice in the wilderness, right? Uh, Isaiah 40, three through five, a voice is calling, clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. And let the ground uh, become a plain, uh, the, the rough ground become a plain and the rugged terrain a broad valley. Then the Lord, the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. In uh, Luke 7, 24 and to 27, we see that uh, when the messengers of John had left, he began to speak to the crowds uh, uh, about John. Jesus was speaking about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? This is the one about whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. So uh, that uh, very important mission of, of John the Baptist to tell everyone that the Redeemer had arrived and that uh, 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 the Son of God was among them uh, was was predicted uh, long before in uh, under the prophet Isaiah. Also under the prophet uh, Malachi, latter prophet, but he still counts. <laughs> Everybody wants to short strength to those latter prophets. Okay? <laughs> Malachi 3, 1 says, Behold, I'm going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me. And the Lord, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. Uh, Luke 7, 24 and 27 again, when the messengers of John had left, why did you go out to the wilderness to see? This is the one whom it is written, behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Uh, declared, uh, uh, the next topic is that uh, uh, this child, uh, this uh, will be declared the son of God. I, uh, Psalms 2, 7. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Um, Matthew 3, 16, 17. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were open and he saw the spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So we have the uh, fulfillment almost of the exact words of God. He just said it again, right? He said it in Psalms. Then he said it in, in, uh, alive in, uh, uh, at the baptism of Jesus. This is my son. He's the declared son of God. Okay. So there's some of the prophecies that, that uh, surround the, the coming Messiah and the birth of, of our Savior. One of the assurances is that they are one and the same, right? The Messiah long waited for is Jesus Christ, our Savior. And, uh, um, you know, the, the people miss the fact that the Messiah 
we were told that the Messiah was the one who was going to die on our behalf. Everybody in the Old Testament makes a mistake of saying the Messiah is going to be a king, which he rightly is. But they overlooked the fact that he was going to die to redeem us all. And uh, uh, so it's it's the same person who died for us is the same person that's going to rule over the earth and all nations forevermore. And so it's integral to the birth of Christ that we see the millennial reign of Christ. Okay, so there's our, our uh, um, uh, advent predicted and fulfilled from the Old Testament to the New. The next thing we want to look at is the culmination of fulfillment of the ad, advent. Um, we're going to see the biblical chronology of the birth of Jesus, the events is laid out and how we, we uh, track them from gospel to gospel and, and mentioned this in the uh, uh, other books of the, of the Bible. Uh, so we're going to have some overlap in the verses we've just seen because now we're putting these events in chronological order in the birth of Christ. Uh, we have the announcement of uh, the birth uh, of John, the forerunner, Part, an important part of prophecy fulfillment, right, is that there would be a forerunner for the Messiah. So that's part of the biblical chronology, and it's the first thing that happened uh, uh, in Luke 1, 5 through 25. The angel appeared and uh, told the father of John the Baptist that uh, he was going to be born um, and what his job was going to be. Uh, the second thing, uh, announcement of the birth of Jesus to Mary. We find the Annunciation uh, to Mary in Luke chapter 1, 26 through 38. Uh, next, third, uh, Mary visits Elizabeth in uh, Luke uh, 1, 39 through 45. Elizabeth, the wife of Zacharias and the uh, husband uh, and uh, father of John. Mother. Mother of John, yeah. Mother of father. God, it doesn't make any difference these days, does it? Yeah. But we're going to keep it straight. She was the mother of John. Now, uh, let's see. Um, uh, praise to God by Mary. is it, it, she. This is important in the chronology of the birth of Christ because it shows us that Mary knew what was going on. Mary was not just a surprise teenager, right? Uh, and... Uh, uh, she understood the scripture and she understood what, what, what the angel had said and what was going on. And so we see a beautiful uh, uh, prayer of praise to God by Mary in Luke uh, uh, chapter 1, verses 46 through 56. Um, fifth, we have the birth of John um, uh, in Luke 1, 57 through 66. And, uh, uh, and, and that's same time we see the praise of Jesus by Zacharias. They know what's going on. They see the prophet, they know the prophecies, they see the prophecies come through true. So when when they see those things happen, they give praise to God. And that prayer and that prayer of praise is found um, in uh, Luke 1 67 through 75. And uh, the praise of John, as we said, the forerunner in uh, uh, verses 67 or 76 through 79. So uh, uh, praise of, of a recognition of the prophecy of the forerunner and a recognition of Jesus as the Messiah is found in this beautiful prayer of praise by Zacharias found there in Luke 1, 67 through 79, all total, okay? Um, uh, six, we have the announcement of birth of Jesus to Joseph, uh, Matthew 1, 18 through 25, where the uh, angel came to assure him that he didn't need to uh, divorce Mary. Nothing bad had, had gone on. And, uh, and uh, the seventh thing in the chronology is uh, Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem. We saw that in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Uh, they had to return to their home city for for the uh, uh, ordered census that was taking place. So they went back to uh, the the uh, Joseph's hometown, Bethlehem. Uh, and in 
the eighth thing to happen in this chronology is the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, which is Luke chapter 2, 6 through 7. Birth of Jesus, Luke chapter 2, 6 through 7. Um, ninth event in our chronology, the angel Gabriel announces to the shepherds of the birth of Jesus in Luke 2, 8 through 20. Um, it's a It's an amazing and humbling thing that 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 uh, the announcement of the Messiah uh, from from Gabriel came to shepherds. Shepherds were at the bottom of the of the pecking order in the in in the ancient world. Uh, they 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 lived outside a lot. They lived with sheep a lot. They didn't smell good. They were they were un, they were considered unclean by by uh, other members of society. And, and, and so this angel, Gabriel, the angel chose some, some, uh, of the despised people in the society to, to reveal to them that Jesus, the Messiah had come. Why would they do that? Because he came for the dirtiest of us, right? He came to cleanse those who are, are who are despicable in the sight of everyone else. And uh, so he chose those uh, shepherds in their uh, um, um, in the field there. So the announcement of the shepherds to the birth of Jesus that's in Luke two eight through twenty, and uh, uh, and and that the shepherds uh, the next thing was the shepherd find Jesus in a feeding trough as was prophesied in Luke uh, two eight through twenty. A manger is a feeding trough, right? Everybody knows that. Okay. Um, let's see. My, my, it was not prophesied that my font was too small. That's why I keep leaning in here. Sorry. Um, I, 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 you know, it looks big on the computer. Then you print it out and oh, oh, I did that too small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. So, uh, uh, that was point nine. Gabriel's announcement to the shepherds. Ten. Tenth event in our chronology is that Jesus was taken to Jerusalem to be circumcised on the eighth day, as the custom of the law, Luke chapter 2, 21. Uh, um, Eleven, uh, uh, eleventh event in this uh, uh, chronology, Jesus was presented in Jerusalem uh, in Luke chapter 2, 22 through 38. This is... Uh, um, yeah, this is this is another requirement of the law. Everybody knows about circumcision on the eighth day, but then shortly after that, the baby goes to the temple, is taken to the temple and presented to everybody. Then three big three big events for uh, in in Jewish upbringing was circumcision the second was this presentation as a baby and the third would be what we what the modern Jews call a bar mitzvah right when he was about 12 he would he would be presented to the congregation as responsible for him, himself at that point or herself now I don't know if, I can't remember if the, if the back mitzvah is in the old testament or not or if it's just a modern thing that they do but uh um there was another one uh, another important event in the in the life of of a uh, uh, upcoming Jewish male, and that's if he was commissioned for some uh, undertaking, some legal or or uh, uh, priestly undertaking. He would be presented again in the temple, and he had to be at least thirty years of age. And we find in the life of Christ that he was thirty when he was baptized and, and, and we see the father proclaiming him as the son of God that would, you know, it's the Messiah. So even the baptism of Christ is a, is a fulfillment of, of the requirement of the law. Remember Christ fulfilled the law exactly and completely. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, Jesus is, was uh, the uh, 11th thing. Jesus was presented in Jerusalem in Luke chapter 2, 22 through 38. Several events happened there. 
uh, Jesus was presented to God in Jerusalem in 22 through 24. Uh, uh, Simeon and the baby Jesus uh, story is in uh, 2, 25 through 35. Uh, the prophetess Anna and the baby Jesus is found in uh, Luke 2, 22, or, or 2 uh, 36 through 38. So uh, recognition of Jesus as the baby Messiah by three different people in that, that one uh, chapter of Luke. Uh, then we have uh, uh, the next great event, uh, the 12th thing in our chronology, uh, the Magi from the East visit Jesus in Bethlehem. And that's in Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Um, uh, let's see. In... Uh, Uh, important thing to notice there that we typically in our custom and tradition say the, the Magi, you know, uh, with their frankincense, gold, and myrrh, his uh, uh, at the, uh, 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 manger, right? That's the, the tr tr traditional picture that we have. But you see here in this chronology that it's, it's quite a bit after the birth of Jesus. He's already been, you know, circumcised. He's already been presented to others. So the, the Magi didn't go and see Jesus, the baby Jesus, and give him the gifts in the manger. They saw him at wherever they were living in their house at that time, a little further down the, down the, uh, uh, What's the chronology. What's the frame from Egypt to because he was presented in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Remember, the, the, the Herod ordered the children to be killed after, after the Magi come and say, hey, where's the king? Okay. And, and so the Magi see Jesus in his house. He's already talked to Herod. So here's coming, the, the, the fleet to, uh, yeah, they're about to, about to leave for Egypt here because, because they warned, were warned that Herod was going to try and kill the, Messiah. So no one in the synagogue turned on to this when he was presented. Not that we're told. Well, that that presentation in the in the in the temple, yeah, there were at least three people recognized him as as Messiah then. His mother and father. No, not just his, his mother and father. There was uh that was back in uh, where was it? Yeah. Uh, Jesus presented in Jerusalem at the temple or, or, or synagogue or in Luke chapter 2, 22 through 38, we see, uh, uh, his parents presented him in, the, in, in Jerusalem. He was recognized by Simeon and he was recognized by Anna, uh, okay. as well. So, yeah, we have a record that people were, were catching on. They knew that he was the Messiah when he was presented. But that's a good question. Very good question. Uh, so the Magi from the East visit him uh, and they go to his house, not at the at manger side, but that's okay. We can put some wise men over here on our nativity if you feel like it. Uh, let's see. Customs and practices, you know. Uh, uh, so he, uh, uh, um, the 13th thing that we see in our chronology, May, uh, Joseph and Mary and the baby traveled to Egypt. That's in Matthew 2, 13 through 15. Uh, uh, next is uh, the 14th thing is that Herod orders the killing of male children two years or under because he wanted to make sure that he got them all, right? Because the, the Magi knew that the child had been born, but not that he was uh, 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 where he was, right? So they told him that the king was out there and that he had been born. And, and Herod, since Herod didn't know exactly when, it, it, he, he had them all killed. Uh, that's, that story is in Matthew chapter 2, 16 through 18. Uh, the uh, next event, 15, will be Mary, uh, Joseph and Mary and the baby returned to Nazareth. We see that in Matthew chapter 2. 19 through 23, and also Luke records it in chapter 239, 239. Uh, 16th thing in our chronology is the early years of the humanity of Jesus. Uh, uh, we see this uh, 
in Luke chapter 2 again. Uh, we see uh, uh, his growth in Luke chapter 2, 40. We see his visit to Jerusalem in Luke chapter 2, 41 through 50. And his development in Luke chapter 2, 51 through 52. So, um, remember in, in this story here, let's learn over at Luke. Luke chapter 2, Yeah, we'll, we'll pick it up in uh, 2.40 here and give it a read through. Remember, this is at least, he said, it, it, you know, got to be over two years old because uh, uh, some time had passed from his birth before the Magi showed up. And then uh, they go to Jerusalem and we know they came back when Herod was dead and we know when Herod died because they had good records. They waited until Herod was dead because he's the one who wanted to kill the babies, right? And, uh, um, they weren't sure that he had given up on that effort yet. So they, they would, just in case he had heard somebody got away and went to Egypt, he, he, they waited until he was dead before he came back. So Jesus is probably in the three year, three to five year old range in this, in, as we read through this. And that's pretty amazing, uh, considering some of the things that are about to come out of his mouth. Okay. Um, uh, so, if, uh, uh, Luke chapter 240. And the child continued to grow in, and, and become strong, increasing in wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. And his parents used to go to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. Uh, and when he became 12, they went, there is 12 now, he, they went up there according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning, after spending the full number of days, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. And his parents were unaware of it. Uh, but Jesus, but supposed to, uh, but were unaware, but supposed him, supposed him to be in the caravan and went a day's journey. And they began looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem looking for him. And it came about that after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us this way? They've been looking for him for three days. Why have you treated us this way? Um, we have been anxiously looking for you. Um, that's the, that's the origin of the Jewish mother guilt trip. Why have you treated us this way? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. It's just a little stereotypical. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've been anxiously looking for you. And he said to them, why is it that you were looking for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? And they said, and they did not understand the statement which he had made to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth, and he continued in subject, subject, subjection to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Okay, So there's the, the chronology of events of, of uh, 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 the birth of Jesus. And they're right in line with all of the... Uh, prophetic announcements that we had in the Old Testament of what was going to happen for this at ad, this advent this point in history when God became man and and all the world will be blessed by him because he's the only source of salvation restoration of our fellowship with God is by is only through the imputation of God's righteousness righteousness perfect righteousness can only fellowship with per, perfect righteousness and so by God becoming man and dying for that, that uh, those sins, that, that unrighteousness that, that we have, he gave us his righteousness. So now we can come to the Father and, and, and have a relationship with him through the work of Christ and in the power of the spirit that he's given us. At Christmas time and all, as always, right, our goal is to Remember that Jesus has, has done all the work for our salvation. And because of that work, 
He's given us his spirit that we can do his work in our lives. And our work in, 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 in the work in our lives that he's given us is to glorify him, to tell others about him, to uh, 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 make our lives a, a uh, uh, an advertisement for what God has done for us and what Christ is willing to do for all others. And every person you see, Merry Christmas to. Think about, well, do they know the gospel? Do they need the gospel? They, they need the greatest gift I can give them, and that's salvation through Jesus. May that be on your mind as we celebrate Christmas through the next week, and uh, we'll all assemble together again next Sunday um, for our final lesson here. Thank you. Heavenly Father, your grace is, is just immense and, and matchless, and we're always in awe that you have uh, uh, sent your son to die that we might come before your throne of grace. And we praise you and thank you for that magnificent gift. Help us, Heavenly Father, to find ways to glorify your son in all that we do through this holiday season. And uh, pray that that uh, Christmas will be the opportunity that, uh, that it was meant to be, to tell others of, of the miracle of the birth of your son, why he came. Amen.